wave once again. Lonnie Lardner concludes her series report on a trend called New Wave. It has rolled into Nashville in a variety of ways. It seems to have infiltrated into some of Music City's music. It's showing up as a look worn by young people who want to be different. And the new music being played at least on at least one local radio station is aimed at the group craving its own sound. Lonnie says you can't generalize about this group because it seems each has his or her own individual statement to make. But you can get a feel for the battle over what's in and what's out in part four of New Wave. When I first came into town, uh, I mentioned it to my general manager, Vic Rumor, and Vic says, New Wave? You know, what are you talking about? And I said, it's happening. There's a trend emerging. When they hear New Wave, it just has that automatic connotation of being punk, which, which automatically lends to the concept of safety pins through, through cheeks and horrible connotations which it really isn't. I think the preps have a lot to do with New Wave. It's a more of a valley girl tuition type thing, and, and the people that enjoy New Wave are the valley girls, and they're very high society people of Nashville. To me, the New Wave has already happened, and the New Wave is really dead. Is that a bad word? Is there... um, to me, it is. To me, it, to me, New Wave, New Wave happened and died. A disco's over, and it's a new, new era. It's Saturday night dress. It really is. It's a Saturday night thing out there. It's a fantasy trip. I live and breathe the way I look. I don't, I don't just dress up for a night appearance. Is this a, attractive to the wealthy kids? Yeah, especially. Especially. It's tougher for them to be decadent. Everybody who is 17 years old and a junior or senior in high school needs to show that they're different. Uh, so that the unusual way you present, you think, provokes the very thing about this culture that you don't like, namely its conformity and its refusal to accept difference. Yeah. There's, why, why should people have to conform to everything? You know? The previous generation had the English invasion of the mid-60s, and the end of that generation ended up with the guitar rock of the early 70s. A new generation's coming up, and they don't like the music of their older brothers and sisters or parents. They want their own identity in fashion, in music, in taste, and this new music reflects that uh, desire to be different. Whatever the new wave really is, whether it's here for a while or gone for good, WKDA radio program director Smokey Rivers says it's making its mark. He calls this sound new music. So you'll be hearing his announcers like Dick Shannon introducing songs and groups like this. Honking a new rock, Tom Tom Club, Close to the Bone, their second album. It's a man with the four-way hips. The station launched its new music format in January. Rivers says for taking a risk, it's doing well. The station's audience, says Rivers, ranges between 15 and 25. High school, college, and upwardly mobile. They are people, he says... Not satisfied with the status quo. Not rabble-rousers. They're pretty conservative uh, folks. Uh, if you see them on the street, they will look rather normal. They don't have orange hair. They don't wear uh, spikes on bracelets and things like that. Uh, they don't carry dogs heads under their arms, something dripping, <laughs> or anything like that. They're rather normal people. A lot of people think this new music is uh, uh, part of a subculture, which is so far removed from the conservative center that they can't put a handle on it. It's fun music. And like the fun music, the new wave has rolled in fun looks to Nashville as well. New Wave has washed in a style in clothes and hair. And like the music, hairstyles are becoming more progressive, says hairdresser Rick Kay of Green Hills. He says people are wearing updated or muted down versions of the original New Wave, and the offspring is attractive to a broader audience. Now, this isn't really anything that I would recommend to my Bellmead woman in her 60s, per se, but her grandson? Of course, there's still a call for the wild, says Riquet. This technique is called leopardizing. Black washable spots sprayed on red or blonde hair for that animal look. Because it takes a certain type of individual to do this. And like Norman Bates. <laughs> right, exactly. If the leopard spots are too much for you, there's always blue dye. It's not going to work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> hair 
around this group of musicians. But Men at Work is a sample of what New Wave has become musically, a trend that is being embraced by the masses. And that, say some, is what makes a new trend unpalatable. When everyone likes it, it's out. Because there's this big underground movement all over the country going on. And when it becomes top ten, all of a sudden it's not underground. You know, your older sister's listening to it and stuff like that, and the kids felt really kind of isolated. Andy McLennan says the new wave trend was destroyed by the very thing it rebelled against most, commercialism. He says the department stores and TV commercials are beginning to be new wave, and that is a sure sign of death. Uh, if you're a real big new music freak, you're going to say, yeah, Stevie Nicks, I can't stand her, she's yeah. straight with Mac. But let's not talk about what she used to represent, let's just deal with the sound of the record. I think that's what's important. In the meantime, new music records are shipped in by the bundle to radio stations like this who are playing the new sounds. For them, taking a chance is profitable. For clothing stores like this, the new wave look is admittedly bringing in the bucks. And for hairstylists like Riquet, there is always someone asking for that look on the cover of a trendy magazine. Whether the new wave stays around for a while or soon dies like disco did, it seems to be the base for what is happening right now. And that probably means the underground cult that started it all will be discovering something new while it shuns what it once called its own. Say that's not true. You would rather fool around than be alone with me. <laughs> well, next week we move from new wave to something that's been around a little longer. Chocolate, the Consuming Passion, a series by Pat Riddle. We'll be back with more Channel 4 Magazine after this.